my, my two commanders, Mikael Ali, who has done a very good job at bringing the, the program and the policy to this point, is going to be handing it off to Commander Richard Correa, who will be taking over the crisis intervention training uh, program as uh, in 2013 assignments have changed and Commander Ali will be focusing on, on other things but still be available for a historical perspective as what has gone before. Thank you. Yeah, I guess I just, I just think it's an unfortunate conversation to be having um, because um, the, um, seems to me that the focus really should be on, I, I believe that this is a public health issue and I um, went to call the public health department and never got around to it seems to me that mental health is an issue that um, there are a lot of people in this city, I believe, especially low-income people, um, not especially, but there are a lot of people who are, um, have those other types of issues to deal with. And uh, so it seems to me that rather than the conversation be about what additional weapon can we use against people who are having a mental health crisis, that the conversation should be how do we strengthen our CIT, program so that uh, officers won't have that knee-jerk reaction to be as creating a culture where it's okay to use a weapon with someone in crisis and sort of giving that suggestion that yeah there's all these steps that you have to take but it's okay to take a person who's in mental health crisis and I just don't think that's okay and I haven't had the opportunity to speak to mental health professionals but I'm wondering uh, what kind of trauma would be um, imposed on an individual who's suffering some, from some kind of mental illness, who in the crisis moment is tased. I don't know. I mean, I just don't think that this would have maybe a very positive impact on the recovery. I think it might create maybe more PTSD. I don't know, I'm not a mental health professional. I'm just saying that, um, you know, I just also read very little about the case, but I know that um, the, um, um, the individual, I guess, at the chocolate, uh, factory who was killed um, was the brandishing uh, box cutter. So, I mean, I wasn't there. I, I, I'm not going to pass judgment. I'm just saying that. I'm just wondering how we get from there to where, how it escalated to the point where it did. So I'm just saying that if, I think if people had more training around crisis intervention that dealt with compassion as opposed to reaching for a weapon, then maybe, I mean, I, I don't mean to sound naive, but you know, and in Ireland and Ireland, they use rubber bullets, and rubber bullets weren't exactly non-lethal. Tasers have been known to be lethal. But we have incidents like Oscar Grant and others where people accidentally grab for the taser, and people are, are killed. And there's more than one incident of that, and mostly it's been people of color who have been the victims of this. Um, and um, so it just seems to me that um, it would be great, I think, if we could spend more time with people having in wiping the basket of, you know, tools that you all could use that have more to do with a different kind of intervention, one that isn't based on the web. And also in the South, I remember reading during the civil rights period where they were uh, hosing people down with water, and the water also had a lethal impact. So I'm just saying that these weapons sound, well, we're not using the gun, we're not using actual bullets, but it doesn't really necessarily um, I'm not convinced that it necessarily always takes away the lethal aspect. I and mean, I think we have plenty of examples where people of color and low-income working people have particularly been victimized by that. And there was even that incident years ago in the theater here at Sony Theater, where that young man was, I think, brandishing another little, I don't know, wasn't brandishing a gun, was killed. So. Um, I'm just afraid that if that the option becomes to use a taser, that that's going to be where people go automatically. Instead of uh, having, like you said, to slow down, think more, whatever. I'm not, you know, and since tasers do have a lethal, there's a possibility of, uh, of that, then I'm just not, I just wish the conversation were really different here. I, I agree. I, I don't disagree with what you're saying, and, and certainly we've sat through more hearings than I can count uh, where many people have expressed first-hand opinion. Uh, the measuring on situation was Idris Skelly, uh, and that you spoke of the Cho Chocolate Factory. I, I think that um, 
In those instances, the investigations showed that the, the, the use of the officer's firearm was justified. I don't want to get into arguments about that, but I would say that in both of those instances, I am pressed. Uh, I am being I am been pressed, better, and I need to stand uh, Might have been a better option. It certainly would have been a less legal option than the firearm. We might be discussing how, how that happened or, you know, how someone fell and recovered versus um, there were uh, the firearm. It, and again, the, the, there is a process. Uh, the, there will be long debate. This is not something that, that people on both sides of the issue don't feel strongly about. Um, but again, we're, we're, the, we're gonna have the conversation and the commission will make a decision. And uh, I, I just think that uh, as prescribed by the resolution, it's the responsible way to do it. Yeah, I mean, I just think that we should be creating a culture of crisis intervention, not creating a culture of, of using the weapon, which is the tape. I'm you know, because I'm depressed. You know, it's okay to I can't do this from the I am disabled. I'm sitting in front. I haven't been here before. I don't think I would ever use the word easy as an yeah. adjective okay. in any context, dealing with a person in crisis, either for the person or the officer or somebody else. I, I would suggest that it's just, again, it's for, for, for me, uh, the impact that an officer having to use deadly force has on an officer, it's obvious the injury to the person, but the impact psychologically that it has on the officer is also tremendous. So I've, I've often been heard saying that on my watch, if we never have to shoot anybody with a firearm, that works for me. So we had to do that. I was there that day at the show chocolate factory. I know the officer well. Uh, it breaks my heart both for the, the family of the, the, the man that was in crisis and for the officer. And so I just felt it, it uh, um, I do need to bring it forward and let the, the public be heard and have the commission vote it up or down on behalf of the department. Thank you. Uh,